I appreciate the opportunity to speak today about the need for a trauma system in Arkansas. Many of us here are aware of the sobering statistics. About 2,100 Arkansans die from trauma each year. There are about 25,000 hospitalizations, about 6,000 permanent disabilities. But the part that is so heartbreaking is the fact that many of those deaths, many of those disabilities are preventable. Hundreds of preventable deaths, hundreds of preventable disabilities each year. Today I want to focus on the fact that injury is a statewide problem in Arkansas. The proposed trauma system we've talked about therefore is a statewide system. We can't fix the problem without a statewide system. Some have said that this proposal is to establish two or three hospitals as, as level one centers. That is only a part of it. If we don't have a statewide system, we can't make the difference that we need. It's a network of hospitals, of first providers, of EMS agencies, of rehabilitation centers all across our state to make a difference for our citizens. We need to invest in new buildings. We need to invest in more providers so that we can continue to serve and serve more and more people. You know, I talked to a, one of my elected representatives and he said, well, I'm finding it difficult to support the tobacco tax increase because of the financial burden that it places on our poor folks. And I'm afraid our poor folks are going to continue to smoke and not take care of their kids. I thought about that and I finally broke it down to basic arithmetic because that's what I can understand. A pack a day smoker in a week will generate an additional $8 of expenses to himself. You know, about four or five months ago, that bought you two gallons of gas. Governor, to me, that's a small investment to make in the, in the health of our, of our people. I'm glad you're doing it. You folks, you're doing the right thing. Thank you. I come thinking about what I just heard, talking about some of the community health centers having to close. If they only knew the importance of these centers, I don't know what I would have done if it had not been for the community health center. My wife and I became uh, recipients of it a couple of years ago. We were off doing ministry in Chicago. She got sick. We didn't have any health care. We didn't know what we were going to do. But we called Dr. Jones, which operates one of the community health centers. And she literally became our lifeline for survival. Then sickness hit me last year. I had a heart attack. My medication and everything about it has just escalated. Ladies and gentlemen, we need all that we can get from our community health centers. I hope and pray that those that are able to make the decisions about this will truly consider all of us, those of us that live in small rural areas that don't have affordable health care. And if it was not for these centers, we don't know what we would do. Please be favorable to us. We need our sons. Ladies and gentlemen, the governor of the state of Arkansas, Mike Beebe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. I don't know what to add to the eloquence that's already been expressed on this platform. Every speaker has brought a dimension to this debate and an illumination to the issue uh, that's just rife with eloquence. Uh, the members of the General Assembly who are standing behind uh, deserve enormous thanks and praise. I hope you'll give it to them again.
And the leadership demonstrated by President Johnson and Speaker Wills, together with the sponsors, Senator uh, Steele and Representative uh, Reap, as well as the leadership that's been provided for a number of years now by Representative Shelby, they also deserve specific thanks. I don't know that I've ever heard the argument put as succinctly and as clearly, though, as we just heard it put uh, about what this really costs. I don't know where those statistics came from, but I assume they are accurate. Uh, and common sense tells you if they're not exactly accurate, they're certainly in the ballpark. Eight dollars a week is the additional burden on a smoker if this passes. And eight dollars a week is an additional burden on a smoker when in effect, if it is true that this disproportionately hits our poorest people because disproportionately our poorer people are a greater percentage of smokers, then this also disproportionately helps poorer people because it provides health care opportunities for poor people that are not available in the world. You heard the Reverend talk about his own personal experiences. Replicate that across our state. People who don't have the kind of job that gives them good health care. People who don't live in a community where they have access to the specialists and all the doctors just for everyday preventive care, just for maintenance, just for the ability to be able to have the basic fundamentals for their families of health care provided across our state, particularly in the rural parts of Arkansas, by the very programs that will benefit from this proposal. I have heard a time and time again in the last two weeks from good friends of mine who are in the General Assembly who say that their constituents believe and they're telling them that this is just for Little Rock. That how in the world is this helping the rest of Arkansas? And there's a confusion which Doc really kind of cleared up about what a trauma system is and what the trauma system is with regard to this entire program. It is but one part of it, a major part, a cornerstone, the key, if you will, anchor for the whole program. But if it costs $28 million a year for a trauma system across our state, and we're trying to raise $88 million in state money and leverage that with almost $200 million counting federal match money, you can see that a whole lot more is in this besides merely a trauma system, as important and significant as that is. It helps every community and it helps every aspect of our whole health care delivery system. It helps poor people disproportionately more. It helps rural disproportionately more. It helps trauma disproportionately more. It is a comprehensive package, not one isolated package. We have seized, if you will, an opportunity. We have seized a chance to do something comprehensive about health care. We've seized a chance to say this isn't just about one city, one community, or one aspect of where we need to go in improving the quality of lives and the quality of health care for our people. This helps you whether you're in Bentonville or Mitchellville. This helps you whether you are in Falk or whether you're in Amarillo. It makes no difference whether you're in the northeast or the southwest corner or the southeast or the northwest corner or anywhere in between. You were talking about a trauma system. This is not going out and building a new hospital. It's got nothing to do with that. A trauma system involves a network, more than merely hospitals, more than merely doctors. We've already started down this road. We've already invested some of your money, some of your tax dollars, in setting up the kind of software and hardware and communication system so that your rural fire departments, so that the ambulance companies, so state policemen and county sheriff's offices and city policemen can communicate or at least can begin to get the understanding of how you communicate. So if you got a terrible burn in Mount Ida, you can figure out where the nearest burn specialist is to triage until you can get to a more sophisticated 
orthopedic burn specialist. Or if you've got a brain injury, where's the first place that you can get them for the first 20 minutes? And that has to be communicated to the first responders at the rec scene.